Next question for Eric from Gons and Oak. How long, uh, how long does it take metabolically to recover from long duration diets? So for example, a show prep that you have to push for a, a great number of months. So I feel like every question we get, we start with like a list of caveats, but this isn't just for, um, bodybuilding competitors. You know, people go on diets for a variety of reasons and the, the goals of those diets are certainly quite different, but um, I, I think because there's a lot of content out there about recovering from really intense prep diets that people have, I'm not saying that the person asking this question is, but I see a lot of people who are like, okay, so I dieted for six months. How do I recover from this? But what you find is it was six months of a very, very chill diet wasn't a super fast rate of weight loss. They didn't get super lean and they did not lose that much weight. doesn't mean their diet didn't work. It means they took a very conservative approach and they got to a healthy body weight. That is good. <laughs> so, but, but what I'm getting at is recovery from a diet depends on how long was it, how, how extreme was the rate of weight loss and it, essentially how lean did you get at the end? And also what was the, the total magnitude of weight loss? So even if you didn't get exceptionally lean, you might be in an interesting physiological state if you just lost 100 pounds. Um, at the same time, you know, you might be in a super interesting state if you didn't necessarily lose that much weight, but you went from sustainably lean to unsustainably lean for a photo shoot or a competition or whatever for your wedding. You know, people diet for all sorts of reasons. Um, so the, the general premise there is that it, the recovery duration, because uh, the question is how long does it take, the recovery duration depends on how extreme the diet was. And we also have to consider what the word recovery entails. So a lot of people wonder if my metabolic rate or my energy expenditure, energy expenditure seems low, um, if my energy expenditure seems low, how long will it take for that to go back to normal? Sometimes people say, hey, my testosterone is low. When is that going to recover? I'm not performing well in the gym. When is that going to recover? I have no libido or I've been missing my periods or I can't sleep at night or I'm extremely hungry. There are many different facets of recovery uh, that all seem to recover on slightly different time scales. And one of the critical things determining that time scale is how much you actually commit to recovering. So I'm going to, for, for this question, I'm going to assume that you, you dieted to an extreme enough level that recovery is needed, which again is not everybody. If you're at a sustainable body weight and you took a conservative approach to dieting, you probably don't need to recover at all, really. But let's say you do need to recover. You know, you're, you're in this state where energy expenditure is low, your hormones are a mess, your performance sucks, you have no libido, all that stuff. The rate of your recovery is going to be predicated largely on how much you overfeed and to some degree the re the regain of weight is probably going to drive some of this recovery um, how much weight do you need to regain it really depends on what a good sustainable non-dieting body fat is for you you know not everyone has the same minimum body fat level they can that they can comfortably maintain but you, you got to kind of play with it and figure out what that is but I can tell you that if your body's typically nice and comfortable and things are great at 13% body fat as a male and you're trying to hang around at 6% for a while, your recovery could essentially just not happen. I mean, it, you, you, you can basically just keep yourself in that state if you don't commit to actually increasing your energy intake, putting a little bit of weight back on and, and really prioritizing that recovery. So what we can do is we can look at studies that have looked at this recovery in people that have done bodybuilding or physique related preps. And there, there's a few case studies. There is a really nice study by Juha Holmi and his colleagues uh, over in Finland where they actually had a decent sized sample uh, of females that, uh, that did a prep and a recovery. When we look at the, at this data or, or this body of research as a whole, um, the hormones that are associated with short-term energy availability, so looking at things like ghrelin and thyroid hormone, insulin, cortisol, those seem to recover pretty substantially within the first three to four months. Some hormones take a little bit longer. Um, 
testosterone levels in males don't get they they start certainly start recovering within that three to four month time range but they might not be back to near totally normal baseline levels until like five or six months for a lot of people um same thing with leptin obviously leptin is closely tied to how full your fat cells are so certainly if you try to stay super lean the leptin's just not coming back um for most people if if you diet and then recover but you're this is something i've always wondered about leptin so it it does seem to kind of maybe govern set points to some degree and it's based partially on what you're eating partially on energy availability and partially on the fullness of of said fat cells so i was wondering like if let's say someone starts at 25 percent body fat they cut to five percent um because, you know, they very aggressively wanted to do a bodybuilding show and started from a a very, very deep off season. And then they want to, like, settle at 15% after the recovery. Do those leptin levels get back to normal? Because those fat cells, so like 15% is generally a pretty normal, healthy body comp. But those fat cells are going to be a lot less full at 15% than 25%. So like, does leptin like does recovery of leptin happen if people don't get all the way back up to the body comp or i guess down uh back down to the body comp they started with without having data in front of me i I certainly wouldn't expect it to to get all the way straight back to baseline i would expect it to be at a new baseline because again those those fat cells are in a very different state but I would think that it should at least be within a what we would consider like a normal reference range. Gotcha. Whereas when they're when they're down in prep level, it, it will probably be comfortably below the normal reference range. So I don't think the goal should be to get leptin necessarily back to its baseline value because as you get very obese, you can drive those leptin levels through the roof. Mm-hmm. And if I mean, if you want to get those levels when you're down at like 13% body fat, good luck. But I, I would say that it's probably an advisable goal to try to get back within the reference range. And what you might find is that even though even though the leptin level doesn't quite settle back at its highest number, especially if you start with a decent amount of body fat, you might find that, you know, leptin's a little bit lower, but the things we associate with leptin are still re- regulated very normally. Just because um, leptin sensitivity improves? Exactly. Yeah, I, gotcha. I, I would expect that if you started with super inflated leptin levels, you probably had some degree of leptin resistance uh, in many cases. That makes sense. So yeah, I, that that's a, a really good point of something to keep in mind is that the goal doesn't necessarily need to be to get every aspect of your to re- re- retain every aspect of what you did when you were at a substantially higher body fat, but now at a lower one. So like, for instance, let's say you started out 25% body fat, like your example, but strong as hell, right? And you you died it down to 5% or whatever, and you settle back at 13 in the off season. You at 13% is still going to be a much smaller person than you used to be at 25. You're not going to re- recover all your strength. You know, so in in most cases, um, and so that that's something to keep in mind is that if you're not interested in getting all the way back to your starting weight, you're going to have to make some concessions in terms of how you view recovery. But generally speaking, I would say as long as you're allowing a somewhat generous rate of weight regain to put you back at a still decently lean but at least sustainable body fat. Usually within six months, you should, for most outcomes, be about where you're going to be. You know, it should be. You shouldn't be thinking like, well, over the next 18 months, I'm going to start feeling normal. If that's the case, you need to make some more concessions and start eating more. Um, you, you should really try. You should aim to be feeling yourself again within a few months and then essentially fully recovered within six, I think. Um one thing that is extremely unpredictable, though, I don't want to spend a ton of time on it, but I've said it before, the recovery of a normal menstrual cycle is so difficult. Uh, when you look at the research, the amount of variability is really wild. So there was a case study, the first author's last name was Holiday. Um, 
And in that case study, the participant, it took a full 71 weeks um, to, to get back to, uh, I don't know if it was the first menstrual cycle or when it was a fully normal menstrual cycle. Um, but I remember like the, it, it took a full 71 weeks to get the menstrual cycle, at least operating again. Um, and that was with uh, a competitor that did regain, um, close to, if not all of their body weight. I actually think they regained a little bit more than they lost during the prep. Um, there, there are also some, some, uh, larger studies in non-physique athletes looking at like dancers and, uh, various endurance athletes with like menstrual disorders. And even when they do like nine, 12 months, 12 month interventions, it, it's really hit or miss about who's going to recover and who isn't. Um, and there's even a study by, uh, Chu at all, C H O U in 2011, they kind of took a really extreme approach with exogenous leptin injections and uh, menstruation. Uh, it was restored in only seven of the 10 subjects undergoing the injections. And it was restored in a span of three to, or I'm sorry, four to 32 weeks in those seven that did have restoration. So w was that just leptin injections or leptin injections along with overfeeding and some other sort of intervention? I would imagine... <sighs> I'm not certain, but I'd be shocked if they didn't have at least some other kind of intervention to make sure that their diet and exercise habits were conducive to, you know, like getting them at least back to a somewhat appropriate energy availability level. I'd be stunned if that wasn't part of the intervention. Um, I'd have to go back and check, but that would be a pretty nonsensical intervention if they <laughs> if they gave them leptin inject injections and then just said, yeah, but you can still have totally disordered eating and, and run eight hours a day. So I would imagine that there was at least some degree of, uh, of restriction over those aspects. But um, in any case, to put it in a nutshell, um, I was having a discussion with uh, Brandon Roberts, Peter Fitchin, and Eric Helms. And all, you know, we were going back and forth about like, how long does it take to recover? And we're like, I don't know, man, where did you start? How lean did you get? How much are you overfeeding? Um, are you willing to regain your weight? how much of it should you regain? Um, we're trying to put together like a decent estimate on the time. And I think essentially we reached the conclusion that it's like time is not a good way to, to approximate that. It, it, it really comes down to a multifactorial approach after the competition or after this dieting phase, you need to manage your training volume. You need to manage your energy availability and you need to get back to a sustainable body fat. If all of those are met, all of those conditions are met in a timely manner within the first, you know, three, four, five weeks after competition, you're at least moving in those directions. I would expect that, you know, with a, with a steady rate of weight regain and immediately getting to a, a decent training volume and a decent energy availability status, I would say somewhere within three to six months, you should be feeling pretty all right. 